One of the things uh, that I hope we've seen as we've studied these parables is how solemn and serious they are, how challenging and how unrelenting. This has certainly struck me as I've prepared. Jesus doesn't pull any punches. Uh, he goes for the jugular. There's nothing frivolous or superficial about his words. He is never vague or woolly. This tragically has been one of the banes of preaching in Wales over the past century. Too light, too frivolous, too vague. On the one hand, you had the abstruse, academic, philosophical preaching that most people didn't understand. On the other, you had the childish storytelling that sought to entertain the listeners. Christianity should be presented so that everyone understands. Children should be able to follow, and yet it shouldn't be childish. The message shouldn't be presented in a frivolous manner. I'm not saying that ministers and those who preach should go around with a dour face and never joke. But the general tenor should be that of seriousness and earnestness. We are dealing with important issues, with the ultimate questions. Can I ask a question to you as a listener? What's your experience as you go to a place of worship to listen? With what would you compare it? Would you liken it to going to the cinema or to the surgery? That is, do you go to get entertained or to get help? To get gratification or to get better? to get humoured or to get healed, cinema or surgery. I suppose there's a third option, cemetery, uh, but we better leave it at that. What's the purpose of this parable? We are told in verse 13, Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. Be ready. Be ready for the day or hour. What's that? The day of your death or the day of judgment. Don't get caught out. Be ready. Ten virgins. Five foolish and five wise. Wise and foolish. This is a theme throughout the Bible, especially in the book of Proverbs. It comes at the end of the Sermon on the Mount too. Wise and foolish builders. Why were these virgins wise? Well, they took oil with them, or plenty of oil. They prepared. <coughs> Notice, that's the difference. That's the only difference. They were so similar. Five and five virgins waiting for the bridegroom. They had lamps, every one of them. They fall asleep. They are so similar, like the wheat and the tares. The only difference, the wise had plenty of oil, the others none. We can be so similar, look the part, but be lacking in the one essential, no oil. Do I have it, the oil? Verses 6, 7 and 8. Give us of your oil. Notice, if this were a modern parable, it would continue something like this. 
yes, we'll share. And they shared. And everyone went in. And everyone lived happily ever after. And the moral of the story, we must share. Well, sharing is important. <clears throat> but that's not how it ends with the Lord Jesus Christ. No. Once again, it's much more serious and searching. Give us your oil. No, the wise respond. Lest there should not be enough for us and you, but go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding and the door was shut. And it doesn't end there. Verse 11. Afterward, the other virgins came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, Truly, I say to you, I do not know you. These are some of the most frightening words in the whole of the Bible. And they come from mm -hmm. the lips of the Saviour. I do not know you. Do you know him? This is the oil. This is the difference. This is the one thing needed. The essential possession. To know Christ. How are we to be ready for death? By knowing Christ. How are we to be ready for judgment? By knowing Christ. That is acquaintance. Intimate knowledge. Personal acquaintance. Not know about. Not gwe bod. Um, but at nabot. To know someone personally. I could ask you, do you know Rodri? And you would reply, oh yes, I know Rodri. He's from Astragalus. He's married to Beth. He's kind and generous, likes his food, supports Aston Villa and likes to quote Hulk Hogan. We know him. It's personal. There's a relationship there. I could ask you, do you know Edwin Poots? And you may respond, oh yes, um, he's the new leader of the DUP in Northern Ireland. That's right. But do you know him? Well, his father was a politician. That's right. But do you know him? No, I don't know him personally. Or again, I could ask you, do you know Isambard Kingdom Brunel? And you could give me a lot of facts. He was behind the Great Western Railway. He built the Clifton Suspension Bridge and so on. Yes, but do you know him? No, he died years ago. How can you know him? Do you know Jesus Christ? Not the facts, like you do with Isambard Kingdom, Brunel or Edwin Poots. Do you know him in the same way as you know Rodri? Even better than you know Rodri. Do you know him like you know your husband or wife or child or father? Or best friend? It's not a difficult question for us to answer, is it? Do you know him? This is eternal life. That they may know you. The only true God. And him whom you have sent. Jesus Christ. Does he know you? I never knew you. The bridegroom says. That's even more important and more solemn, isn't it? Doesn't, does he, the Lord Jesus Christ, 
does he know me? You may respond, well, he knows everyone. Does he? Does he? He says here to these people, as he does elsewhere, depart from me. I never knew you. Does he know you? Do you have the oil? Are you prepared? Are you ready? What if you should die today? Friends, I'm sorry for asking that question, but this is why we are here. Are you ready? Someone once asked John Wesley what he would do if he knew that that day would be his last day. And he responded something like this. I'm paraphrasing now. He said, at 12 o'clock, I'd have lunch. At 4 o'clock, I'd have tea. At 5 o'clock, I'd go for a walk. At 7 o'clock, I'd preach. At 10 o'clock, I'd go to bed and wake the next day in glory. His point was this. He'd live the same day, the same way as every other day. The way he had planned. Nothing different. Because he was ready. Can you say the same to me? To live, said Paul, is Christ. And to die is gain. Friend, do you know him? Oitinad nabod at Arglwydd Iesigrist. Can it be said of you as it was said of Abraham and he was called the friend of God? I plead with you with all the persuasion that I have this afternoon, get the oil, get the oil, get to know him. If with all your hearts ye truly seek me, ye shall ever truly find me, thus saith our God. I now body even yaw, your bowed sound o hith, a gweld a yachaw doriaith laun, si then drag with all wraith, cael teimro gwaed a groes, yn dofi'r lois ar cyr, a wnaeth i filoedd, o bobois, gyd seinior, an them bir. Amen.